Thank you for joining us today. This is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan citizen based forum where we look at issues of interest to the Tri Cities. First, I'd like to thank Tri Cities Community TV for making this program possible. Before we get started with today's interview, I'd like to acknowledge that this program is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Coquitlam First Nations. We thank the Coquitlam people who continue to take care of these lands and all that is above and below. Today we're speaking to Samantha Agdara. So thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Fabulous. Um, so you're running for a position on Port Moody City Council. That's correct. Have you have you ever been involved in city councils before? Or? Uh, I've never run for ele like elected position before, but I have other experience. So I've been on boards and strata council, which some may say would prepare you. Okay, would say. Oh yeah, I can imagine what strata <laughs> councils could be like. Um, what boards? Tell me what boards. Um, I have been on the board of uh, directors for Shop Local Port Moody. So it's a okay. small nonprofit um, started by local businesses in Port Moody. All right. Um, so that's been operating for a while. I've held various positions on that board. And then um, other sports boards, so the BC Functional Fitness Association, which is pretty new and we're just getting started. So you, you, have, a, uh, you have some experience with governance, so to speak, right? I, my work experience is also, I've also had experience with cities and how cities work from the, so from the outside as like consultant. So. As a consultant? Okay. Yeah, I'm an engineer. So tell me a little bit about that. What? Yeah, I'm an engineer. Um, an engineer, okay. Yeah, and my whole career has been around sustainability and energy planning um, and climate action planning. Okay. And so you worked. You've worked with cities in the past. Yeah, I've worked uh, as a as part of a consulting team. Right. That would work with cities on the so and other organizations on those. Are parts. you allowed to tell me which cities you worked? Actually, I did do. Um, I worked as part of the consultant team that worked on the climate action plan for the city of Port Moody. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. So, and that's one of them. Uh, that's one of them. Okay. So, um, as we're going into this election. Um, I'm, I, I guess there are some changes in Port Moody, aren't there? I think there are some various people are have moved on and some seats have opened up. So mm -hmm. the chances are good. Well, there's 14 councillors or 14 people running for the councillor position. So, okay. um, yeah, we'll see what happens. OK, so then let's let's ask you this. What makes you the best candidate? Uh, I don't know that I'm the best candidate, but I'd say one of the best candidates. Samantha, <laughs> come on. You have to be the best candidate. You're the best I, candidate. I think, I, I think my... Um, Diverse background of some of my work life, and then I'm also a business owner in Port Moody, and okay. obviously a resident of Port Moody. What so. business do you own in Port Moody? <laughs> I own um, with my husband, engineers, engineered body strength and conditioning, because we were both engineers. Okay. So he doesn't practice anymore, but I still practice. So I, I'm. I really am quickly not figuring out what. <laughs> Your business is sorry. It's a gym. With the strength, name. strength it's and conditioning. Gym. So okay. strength and conditioning okay. is a gym. It's yeah. a gym. Yeah. All right. So um, and it's that that mix of um, having been on boards, having been a business owner, that helps you understand uh, more of what needs to happen in your city. Yeah, and I think also like again, just going back to my engineering career, is that gives me another unique perspective of okay. like how things happen in cities and. Um, and I'm used to working in environments that have um, diverse viewpoints, okay. um, working with a lot of information and working collaboratively to get to the to end solutions okay. that are based in okay. data. So, <laughs> so I, what I want to know then is what are the issues? What are the issues in Port Moody that are most important to you right now? Yeah, so I mean, we all know about sort of the division that's happened in council and, and then consequently that's happened in the city. Um, I'm not really going to talk about that, even though I'm like talking about that right now. Yeah. But that that I hope that moving forward that we can um, have a council that will work collaboratively together. But sure. I think the pressing issues for the city is um, development, um, livability, like the livability and sustainable portion of the development, um, economic development, and then also I mean, we all are going to be impacted by climate change. Okay, so that that's a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, so and and I, every one of them, like little lights went off my head. Like, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it's, it's, we yeah. have big issues. Yeah. Like, I think. So let, let's talk first about mm -hmm. um, about development and uh, development as mm -hmm. it pertains to sustainability. Mm -hmm. And and I got to imagine affordability. Absolutely. You know, sustainability and affordability yeah. are hand in hand, aren't mm -hmm. they? Absolutely. Yeah. So so. What do you see needs to happen in Port Moody with regards to um, development? 
I think um, we need to develop like the Port Moody TOD, so transit oriented development, um, where it makes sense, you know, so that's the area around Moody SkyTrain Station. Sure. Um, and we need to continue on the path of like what's happening in Coronation Park and finish that, complete that and build that out. Um, those are the th two main things that are, two main properties that are, or development areas that are around transit and that, that's where it makes sense to densify. Right. We have this opportunity, this amazing opportunity to build communities that um, I term are complete. I mean, it's a, it's a common term, but complete meaning like when you wake up, you could possibly go to work there, you could get your groceries there, you could go see your doctor there, um, or the, all the daily sort of errands that you need to, to do. If you wanna go further, SkyTrain's right there or the West Coast Express. Right. Rarely do you need to hop in a car that hopefully is like a car share. Right. Um, right. And that is part of the sustainability part of it, um, where we are reducing our transportation emissions and then also living in um, in spaces that are really efficient. And so, uh, efficient in the energy sense. Efficient in the sense. So, mm -hmm. so take take an environmental approach to it. Yeah, we need to we need to we need to have that lens of whatever we do. Like that sort of needs to be sort of like in the back of our mind as we right. make decisions right. on like many different things. Yeah. Have you been following um, the the and I'm I'm guessing that you probably have, but mm -hmm. have you been following the the council and the, because there's a lot of contention mm -hmm. over what is too much development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like and so where do you stand on that? Uh, who's right? I, I don't think it, there's an easy answer in there, but I do know that um, we can't continue the status quo. There's a lot of pressure on housing um, in this region. Port Moody lost residents over the past, like for the last census years from 2016 to t 2021. Right. Anecdotally, um, speaking to, you know, like my clients at the gym, why some of them have left and moved further, further east is um, with the work from home, and having small kids at home, like a, a one bedroom and den is not viable for people. Mm -hmm. um, you have one or two adults working from home and it's just, it's not, And but the flip side of that is there's also nowhere to move to in Port Moody for those families. Mm -hmm. They, it's either not affordable or it just doesn't exist. Right, right. So, so I'm trying to understand what I just heard you say. Mm -hmm. it, it, um, we're saying that the status quo, the mm -hmm. status quo as in, um, holding back development mm -hmm. or the status quo of uh, trying to densify too much? The status quo of holding back development and slowing those processes down is, I, I don't think that's the path we should be going right. down. Right. We need to um, keep up our end of the bargain okay. about, about you know, like the TOD. We got SkyTrain because we promised, um, the city promised to densify around those areas. Right. And right. We, we need to do that. Continue to densify yeah. around that, um, which which makes sense, right? That that seems to be an answer. Having SkyTrain um, close to that development mm -hmm. seems to be an answer. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, Port Moody is a community that is a thoroughfare to mm -hmm. Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam yeah. and Maple Ridge and all the way to yeah. Mission. And we have a real issue in this area with cars. Yeah. So um, if so what do you say to those uh, prospective voters who are, who the amount of vehicles in the area are a great concern? Yeah, I, I understand the concern. Obviously, like I've experienced traffic too, um, but I think like putting more people around um, transit areas, transit hubs, um, if we are gonna add people, makes sense. It doesn't make sense to, you know, like build further up Heritage Mountain, not that there's really any place to go anymore, mm -hmm. but um, it doesn't make sense to expand our sprawl because we're all gonna experience traffic. Right. And right. if we can create communities and like hubs, neighborhood hubs where people rarely have to get in their car, it doesn't really matter what's happening in Coquitlam and further east, we won't necessarily be super affected sure. by it. Sure, I, and I get that. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, like if I, so I'm from Port Coquitlam, mm -hmm. so, um, and I'm, um, I, I Unfortunately, a more um, more uh, in tune with some of the issues that mm -hmm. are going on there. Mm -hmm. But I do know that Burt Flynn has been an issue, mm -hmm. and uh, the 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 possible road through Burt Flynn, mm -hmm. and also the uh, the development at the on the Ioka. north side. Yeah, the Ioka lens of the Ioka lens. Yeah. Where can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, I again like because 
that doesn't really, because of the restrictions in um, access to those areas, it doesn't make sense to continue the sprawl necessarily in that way. I think there's there's ways that the lands can be used that doesn't contribute to more traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so like densifying there wouldn't be my first choice. It, mm -hmm. it makes more sense to me to put density or on brownfield sites and now to like Flavel is, you know, it's a mill, like putting people there is totally different than putting people in a forested or like open green space area mm -hmm. and developing there rather mm -hmm. than, and same with the Port Moody TOD. There are businesses there now and, and my business is there, you know, full disclosure, like my business is leasing land, leasing property there now too. So there's definitely concerns about displacement. Sorry, but, there, I, I missed what oh, you so said on there. Also Moody, Moody TOD. Okay. Um, so like there's there's um, definitely you know like as things get developed there's concerns about business retention and keeping existing businesses that want to stay in the community right. still in the community right and you are for that for the development of the TOD yes to, for, and retaining those businesses absolutely and like, making sure that they, yeah. they have the opportunity and yeah as to, much as to possible, stay where they are as much yeah. as possible I mean we know. Um, from um, local BC's work that businesses that are sort of like homegrown and they hire locally, they spend money locally, it's good for the economy, they support local causes, mm -hmm. um, they, you know, donate time and time and goods and services to, um, to, you know, like local sports teams or whatever, like local charities. So it's important that we keep the existing businesses if they want to stay. Okay. Now, you, um, you're going to, I'm going to ask you to forgive me in a mm -hmm. second. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a few other things on your mm -hmm. platform yeah. and, and we've stuck around development yeah. for a second and I'm, it's escaping me that uh, economic development. So we kind of touched on that Okay. and okay. then, um, the climate change, climate action, which is also kind of interwoven in all those things. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you, you worked, you said on developing Port Moody's climate action plan. Yep. I was right? part of the consulting team that that was uh, hired to do that, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about uh, about what that plan looks like. Yeah, so it, ha it has, um, There's. A, I mean, at the end of the day, there, it needs to be implemented. It's The end result is a number of recommendations to reduce Port Moody's um, climate impact and also to adapt and adapt to climate change. So those actions, um, you know, around housing and transportation, like active transportation, um, but ultimately like those actions, some of them have started to be implemented by the staff and, mm -hmm. and we just need to continue um, to go down that road. So, okay. So um, it, are there places where you'd recommend they do even more in our community? What do you mean more? Uh, uh, in terms of... Um, Retaining trees, um, uh, I'm not absolutely adding sure. trees. Add, yeah, yeah, I mean, to that, uh, adding tree cover is is um, and more greenery is great for lowering temperatures, um, surface temperatures. When you know, like in the heat dome, right? Treed areas fared much better than um, open areas, and that's you know, like if you look at Moody Center. TOD, that's one thing that we could gain there through development is more tree cover, more canopy cover, because there's literally no trees there right now. Right. Um, and, but it feel you know, when people, when we talk about Port Moody, mm -hmm. there's, it's, a, there's, there's a, a it's a, a very treed space. area. Yeah. And, and I'm not, I'm not in any way saying ah, we've got enough trees no. because I, I'm with you, mm -hmm. tr adding treed cover mm -hmm. is, is there's just all nicer, sorts of right? studies that n just nicer. Yeah. And that's, isn't that just a nice way to, it's just it's nicer. It's just nicer. It's but better it's for us. But it's also mm -hmm. economically, it brings benefits mm -hmm. to a community and to the individual, not only the people who live there and own property mm -hmm. there, but to the businesses and, yeah. and other people as well. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. if I'm understanding, if I understand this correctly, mm -hmm. you'd be uh, an advocate for that kind of thing. Yeah, for like adding urban trees, for sure. Um, I, there's lots of other things that we can do to make our city more livable in the face of um, climate change. Yeah. Um, you know, improving, you know, stormwater retention. And I mean, some of those things happen through when the development planning process happens, like those are things you can ask for um, from developers to include in their plans, like mm -hmm. the way buildings get built and the way we think about transportation. So like, you know, we have a bike route or a bike path, a multi-use path from, um, but it, it pretty much ends at Rocky Point. It kind of goes from Newport Suderbrook to Rocky Point and then the connections from there are pretty poor. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to encourage people to to walk and to bike, and part of that is making it pretty. You know, like 
it's not inviting to ride down a street like Spring Street right now in Port Moody where there's no trees and there's mm -hmm. no infrastructure. It just literally has a sign on the road for the bike. Yeah. You know, like this is yeah. a bike path. And we're like, yeah. great. But it, it's, you know, not totally inviting. And especially you want to encourage that in um, kids and stuff like families. And you want families with their kids to feel safe going on these paths yeah. and, and getting around the city without getting in the car. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. Ticked off a little, another little light. Uh, okay. um, you, you're, you're mention, you're talking about um, uh, a city that's rideable. Yeah. So you're a proponent of that. Absolutely. And that's yeah. something that you would yep. push is more. But yet, at the same time, there are people out there that are like, the roads are car for cars. Like. Yeah. And the sidewalks are for I, walking. I, yeah, I know. There's like a lot of pushback, and or like there's kind of a couple camps. I, I like my family lived. I have two daughters, and yeah. um, they're 12 and 14, and. My husband and we live in Suderbrook and, you know, our business is in Moody Center. And we lived for three years without a car. Sure. Uh, and we were met car share members. So it's possible. And the, we were lucky in the sense, like, there's the multi-use path between where we need to go. But beyond mm. that, there isn't. Um, but to your point about, like, people thinking that bikes don't really have a place, mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, not everyone's going to ride their bike. And, and that's fine. But we do, um, as we, as we de redevelop and... Think about our infrastructure. Where are the opportunities that we can keep bikes out of the road mm -hmm. and out of, out of off the sidewalk? So, like having separate infrastructure for them. Right. Like Europe is really good at that. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right, and, 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 and it's an enjoyable experience, I think, for everyone. Right. It it, it could be. Mm -hmm. It could be. But I think it takes a little bit of education as well. Mm -hmm. And do you see this? That's a role of the city to do a bit of that education, or? Yeah, as as like. Um, as the city adds these amenities, I think definitely there is a role for the city to play. There's lots of other um, cycling groups like Hub Cycling to to provide educational opportunities, mm -hmm. and it would be great to invite them yeah. into sort of like any unveiling of new infrastructure yeah. for bikes. The tricky thing about that is the funding, though, right? Is yeah. It, and uh, so, so yeah. because you're running for council, mm -hmm. so my question to you is: If I was a voter, would be mm -hmm. a voter who likes bikes. Mm -hmm. So, like, would you see there a role for the city to fund that to Hub, or are you going to leave that all to Hub because? I'm kind mm -hmm. of the kind of person who thinks it ain't going to get done if we leave it. If we leave everything to these groups, no, it, it, it will get done. Like the city, definitely, there is a transportation master plan. So there is, there is in that plan like where they're going to improve the bike mm -hmm. lane access. So obviously, the city has a role of funding and educating. Yeah. Um, but I think wherever you can collaborate um, to to sort of like reach more people, yeah. it, it's yeah. a net benefit to everyone. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna circle a little bit back. Thank you for mm -hmm. talking about bikes. I like mm -hmm. bikes. Um, and and we're seeing we're seeing so many different kinds of forms mm -hmm. of wheeled transportations, mm -hmm. right? Like it's the, great. The electric scooter. It is great. Mm -hmm. But we're also seeing conflict, there's yeah. a huge conflict yeah. uh, at those things, yeah. um, which is going to be a problem as we go forward, mm -hmm. isn't it? Well, um, that's where I think separated paths will come in. Yeah, yeah. But separated paths means you're going to have to fight with the cars. Like that, it, it depends, though. Like I think it's very site specific. Like it depends on where you're trying. If it, you're trying to add it retroactively, yeah. Yes, I think then yeah. there's definitely like that tension between car drivers and cyclists. Yeah. But yeah. I think as as things change, like St. John's isn't going to stay the way it is currently right now right. forever. Right. So as things change, as long as that's sort of like a, a um, part of the plan or part of like design, the design process, then we can get those things. We can build it in as we, we can, go. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, I keep going back to nope, that. That's I'm okay. like, it's a little magnet for me. Yeah. No. Um, so uh, I want to circle back mm -hmm. into to to a uh, subject around the development, mm -hmm. and I apologize now coming all the way back. No, to that's it. fine. Um, but uh, I think that we probably would be amiss if we didn't talk about affordability mm -hmm. in, a, in especially in Port Moody. Mm -hmm. Port Moody is a desirable place yep. to live, right? Mm -hmm. And nice. you've already talked about how yeah. people are having to leave. Yeah. yeah. So when. When dealing with developers, mm -hmm. like what what can we do to get them to stop building these little luxury luxury places and start building yeah. a three bedroom place for for a man and a wife who have two kids? Mm -hmm. I mean, to be clear, we live in a two bedroom in Den, and it's been fine so far. Like we've lived there seventeen years, and and it it can it's totally doable. I think yeah. I think um, a three bedroom would be definitely ideal, but um, you kind of sometimes make do with yeah. what you have. Um, but yeah, like is, but, hmm? is that what our word, our, our world should be like? You got to make do because 
I, I think that there's definitely like um, a question, especially around sustainability and like use of resources is do, do does everyone need to live in like 2000 plus square feet? Yeah. Um, and like, is that a wise use of our resources? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, like that's kind of in the back of my mind, you know, like would it have been nice to have another bedroom instead of a den? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, would it have been nice to, um, you know, have a have a garden because I really enjoy gardening? Yeah, but there's also community gardens, although there's not nearly enough of them to re meet the demand. So that's mm -hmm. like a whole nother discussion. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, where we live in Port Moody, like I feel very fortunate because like across the street is trees and a park and a rec center and um, trails and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so then it, it's kind of becomes this like redefining of like um, what your life is going to be mm -hmm. and like how you're going to live it. Is it going to be how you grew up or, you know, like you think about other places in the world of like, um, you know, like New York City where people live in like 400 square feet. Yeah. And it, not saying that that's the desire, like I don't want to force people into those situations in any way. I'm not saying that at all. It's just thinking about, do you really need, like, do you really need like 2,000, 3,000 double car garage, you know, that kind of life? Or mm -hmm. can you be happy with, um, it, with other things that are important to you? Mm -hmm. I think, I think, uh, in our conversation, you've brought up my privilege, and I'm sitting here examining, <laughs> examining like, hmm, I'm a privileged person because yeah, of mean, my because of my own expectations, and maybe yeah. what we need to do going forward is mm. is is be forced with those little uncom uncomfortable moments where you have to examine your own mm -hmm. um, your own expectations, mm -hmm. which I think you made me do. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm happy to help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, and I, just to go on a little bit about that point is like, because I don't want anybody watching this think that I'm, I'm like hate single family dwellings. And yeah. I, I yeah, grew yeah, up yeah. that way. Like, yeah, I grew yeah. up that way, and that's and and the part of me did like long for my kids to have that experience. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, to me, community was more important, mm -hmm. and where I lived was more important. Mm -hmm. um, than, than having sort of like the things. Yeah. So like, um, and we're talking about development and community building is that the ideal situation of where we live and why we never left is because leaving meant moving farther away and not having access to the parks or having to get into a car um, is that my kids have now grown up in an area where they can walk to Newport and go into a store and go shopping and they you know know the names of everybody there. Right. And I think... Um, that's, you know, sort of tying that into economic development and business retention is that when, if we're talking about trying to keep the community feel, we really need to still have those opportunities for those human interactions. Right. So I know people are worried about, you know, you know, like 36 story towers, which, you know, may or may not happen. I don't know. And it depends on the community, but, um, whenever we are building something, we still think, I think we still need to consider those like very human interactions and like what kind of businesses and like what kind of community are we creating mm -hmm. in those spaces? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's this, I really like this part of our conversation. Mm -hmm. It's an unexpected place that mm -hmm. we went mm -hmm. because, um, because there was a, there was a disconnect in, in, in my mind in some of the things that you were saying mm. in terms of what our expectations should mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And it, it speaks to something that, um, it speaks to something that you said earlier. Uh, it, to me, it said, it spoke to something that you said earlier about respectful conversations mm -hmm. between people who disagree. I mm -hmm. mean, you didn't say those exact mm -hmm. words. Essentially, though. But it, essentially, mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something, this has been a theme on this little program that um, we've created. Um, a theme has been with lots of mm -hmm. people we've talked about how uh, councils are going to retain that kind of respect. Mm -hmm. And I think that you did it there a little mm -hmm. bit, mm -hmm. right? Where there was contention, mm -hmm. it was the respectful conversation mm -hmm. that made people look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, you, and I think that you already answered it, you are aware of the contention that's yeah. been in your council. Mm -hmm. And is that your approach to it? Is that your approach to changing um, hopefully changing mm -hmm. that culture right on council, mm -hmm. which is so contentious. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it throughout like my life and my career, I've always been interested in um, listening to what people have to say and mm -hmm. and like not 
arguing. Like, I don't want to argue with you. Like, right. if you have a different point of view, like we, you have good points of, you have good points in your point of view. It's just like, how do we, how do we continue our conversation without, um, it's not unemotional in any way, but with that respect that you were talking about, like we can agree mm -hmm. to disagree, mm -hmm. but I think in some of those like sort of like tensions of like having these, all these different opinions, you can get some really creative um, ideas out of those things that maybe, you know, you hadn't considered this point of view or I hadn't considered the point of view. Yeah. And, and I'm hoping like just to sort of like model, continue to model that, those, um, that sort of like, way of having discussions and, mm -hmm. and just bring it back to be like, you know, like, okay, like, let's just take a, if we need to, we can take a break, yeah. but come back to this and like, we're not, I, I don't think people are on council for the, in general, for the wrong reasons. I think people, people stand for to be elected officials or stand for this process because they want change in their community. And most, the majority of people are doing it for the right reasons to see change. Mm -hmm. um, are there strongly held opinions? Obviously, mm -hmm. um, but that's okay. I think as long as we can sort of like, you know, find the middle ground because it's not like we disagree on everything. There's yeah. always going to be something that we can agree on, and then let's move on from there. And what's the next thing we can agree on? And how do we how do we walk the line of like? Because ultimately, it, it's like comes back to what does it, we need to listen to the community? What does the community want? And how can we take what the community wants? take what like staff and experts are saying and find that middle ground and move forward because right. ultimately we need to move forward. We can't doing nothing or doing almost nothing is, is not healthy for our community. We need to move forward. Right. Okay. Together, ideally. All right. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to mm -hmm. do this again. Mm -hmm. Samantha Ag Trap. It's not trap, it's tarap, tarap. Tar yeah. yeah. That's how it is. Extra. I apologize. That's okay. Samantha Agtrap. Yes. Thank you so much. No, for, thank you. For, for taking the time to, um, to come and speak to us, mm -hmm. letting people know, mm -hmm. you know, who you are and what mm -hmm. you stand for. Mm -hmm. um, I especially mm -hmm. look forward, if you are successful and get elected, because mm -hmm. you're the best candidate, <laughs> right? Didn't we say that? Um, you said that. No. <laughs> In the right context, mm, right? Yeah. Because uh, I'm not, I'm not you pushing anybody. I'm not yeah. pushing anybody. <laughs> but, um, but if you are successful, mm. I really look forward to modeling that, um, that sensible approach mm -hmm. to working with your colleagues. Because mm -hmm. I think it's, it's. I, I like, I like what I've heard you say, and I'd like to see that on all of our councils. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Nice thank to meet you. Thank you very much. You. For... All right. Hey.